guys welcome back to nb learning today we are going to discuss about the power cycles and carnot cycle what is the power cycle uh, power cycles are basically the devices and system used to produce net power are called engines and the uh, thermo cycles on which they operate called power cycles so these are the power cycle what is the power cycle and there are many types of power cycle for example in gas cycle and vapor cycle gas cycles are those cycles in which our fluid remain in the in the gas position throughout the cycle is called the gas cycle while the vapor cycles are the cycle in which our fluid uh, sometime become the uh, in liquid phase and sometime in the gas phase uh, on the other hand, uh, we also have the uh, categorization on open cycle and closed cycle. Open cycles are the cycles in which we can uh, we cannot uh, reuse the gas or in which our fluid not comes to its initial state or called open cycle. Like in the gas engine, we burn the gases and then um, vent them into the atmosphere and in a closed system our uh, fluid becomes to its original position like uh, in a Rankine cycle uh, over uh, uh, we uh, reduce steam in the boiler then it will go into the steam turbine and uh, uh, in steam turbine it perform the work and uh, go to the condenser and then finally it comes to its initial state uh, uh, as BFW boiler feed water and then it again goes to the boiler so this was a closed cycle and open cycle and types of cycle and what is the Carnot cycle basically uh, a heat engine is any device that use heat to do work and generate motion heat engines power vehicles like cars buses and motorcycles and are used to produce electricity in steam power generators heat engines work by extracting heat from a hot reservoir using some of that heat to do work and exhaust the remaining heat to the cold reservoir so this was uh, something about Carnot cycle and uh, according to the law of thermodynamics we uh, we cannot uh, get output from a system uh, means that if we give uh, the, some input to the a system uh, uh, but we cannot get 100% output from the system due to uh, losses so this is the, the law of uh, thermodynamics but according to the Carnot cycle uh, which is an ideal cycle we can get 100% efficiency which is not possible again this is an idealized cycle uh, now we comes to uh, some air standard assumptions uh, we will uh, keep or in mind some assumptions uh, in all the cycle we have these assumptions first assumption is the working fluid is air which behave as an ideal gas uh, ideal gas is the gas which uh, follow the ideal gas law and ideal gas have some assumptions like uh, in ideal gas there is uh, no uh, there is no force of attraction in ideal gas uh, their clean is inelastic and there's no heat loss all these uh, assumptions are the part of uh, ideal cycle these are assumptions uh, these assumptions are uh, important because we if we idealize the things and uh, the idealize almost must be hundred percent so that we can improve our actual cycle and uh, and try to get it closer to the Mm, ideal cycle so all these are assumptions number two uh, all the processes are internally reversible this is our second assumption third one is there must be a heat addition and in the fourth there must be the heat rejection and uh, another one is is the is the terminology which is used as cold air standard assumptions uh, if the uh, air temperature or any fluid which is being used in your cycle is considered uh, all its values like specific heat and many other uh, uh, values are considered at 25 degree then these assumptions are called cold air standard assumptions so now we come to uh, the uh, 
um, a presentation or practicality uh, practical example of uh, the Carnot cycle first we have a piston cylinder and we have a gas in this uh, and we one thing uh, we two or more thing we have a hot a hot reservoir and a cold reservoir when we put the cylinder and piston on the hot reservoir then the gas become to expand this is called isothermal expansion means that it happen at a constant temperature then we then we keep uh, place it on an isolating non-conducting surface and there is a still some uh, expansion which is called adiabatic expansion this expansion is called adiabatic because there is no um, uh, temperature involved uh, so this is called adiabatic expansion then we and the gas expand maximum as it can then the pressure and temperature uh, uh, goes down and uh, now we put it on the cold reservoir and compress the piston as we compress the um, piston the uh, gas temperature increased due to the compression but uh, the heat is uh, dumped by the cold reservoir now in the fourth step we again place it on a non-conducting surface and continue to compress it until it comes to it in its original state and uh, you can see that the fluid comes to its exactly initial stage so this is the uh, practical example of the Carnot cycle. Now we uh, discuss the um, main four points of the Carnot cycle. Number one, isothermal expansion. In isothermal expansion, there is the temperature is constant, volume increase while pressure decrease. During this phase, the heat enters the system and this can be from burning fuel. As, as I have given example in the start that uh, uh, there is a hot reservoir uh, a hot reservoir may be a burning fuel and may maybe it may be other source uh, like an internal combustion engine or any other source to keep the temperature constant the gas inside the system expand to keep the temperature constant adiabatic ex second one is the adiabatic expansion the gas continue to expand rapidly without any heat input or uh, heat input as it expands it does work on the environment decreasing the internal energy of the system and causing the pressure and temperature to decrease so uh, first one is isothermal expansion and second one is the id body expansion uh, we have also seen in this uh, uh, slide previous that uh, this was our uh, th this was our isothermal expansion and this was our uh, we can say adiabatic expansion and now the third step uh, third, what is the third step you can see here the third step is isothermal compression um, temperature is constant isothermal compression means we have put the engine cylinder on the cold reservoir and we compress it this is called isothermal compression and again it is uh, we put uh, place it on the non-conducting surface and then compress it this is called our fourth step which is adiabatic compression so this was uh, the Carnot cycle and its fourth step now we go toward the graphical explanation in the Carnot cycle a to b is the isothermal expansion means that volume increase and pressure decrease uh, b to c is the adiabatic expansion means further volume increase with no heat input and pressure decrease uh, in isothermal expansion a to b and b to c uh, we get work from the system while c to d isothermal expansion compression and d to a adiabatic compression we work on the system we supply energy to the system and uh, you can see all these uh, four steps are um, and depict in the form of graph uh, which was our um, uh, Carnot cycle. So in this lecture we have discussed about the power cycles and Carnot cycle. Uh, in the next one uh, we also discuss uh, about uh, one thing uh, we and the last I want to tell you the formula for the efficiency of Carnot is TH minus TC over TH.
means uh, hot reservoir minus cold reservoir temperature dividing by hot reservoir temperature you can see here the example and uh, this is answer will be 41 percent uh, formula is important very important formula and we must know about the formula and graphical expansion is too very important so this was to our topic in which we discuss the power cycles and Carnot cycles